Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of Sarah's totally unserious video blog with me, Sarah. I've been spending a lot of time indoors lately trying to avoid contracting or spreading a deadly virus, and because of that I've been trying to make extra efforts to find reasons to be happy. And so one of the things that I've been doing is remembering happy memories and also learning cool new facts. So I was thinking about back when I was in middle school, not often a topic of uh, many happy memories, but in my life I had a great opportunity to participate in a program with an organization called the Smoky House Center in Vermont where I grew up. That's basically a nature conservation center, and they will have middle schoolers come to their center to participate in conservation efforts and get school credit for it. And so about once a week, I would ride with some of my classmates in a large van up to this smoky house center and participate in their work. And so the project that I was given with a few classmates was to help them tag and track the migration patterns of monarch butterflies. So a couple of the students and I would wade through these very large fields of milkweed because monarch butterflies love to snack on milkweed. And so we would go through these fields and gather up the fragile little butterflies and put a really light paper sticker on their wing, which had a unique number and presumably a phone number or something because the idea was that Later on, if someone was to find this butterfly, they could then report by the number where the butterfly had managed to get in its journey. And so, I think we can all agree that butterflies are one of the coolest animals out there. I mean, you think that the caterpillar goes into a chrysalis, and its body basically liquefies and then gets rebuilt into this flying insect. I mean, that's wild and crazy. But also, I learned some really interesting things about their migration habits, especially the monarch butterfly. They can live in Vermont, which is where we were catching them, but they can also live as far north as Canada. And as winter comes, they migrate all the way down to Mexico, Florida, apparently even Cuba sometimes, which is crazy. Can you really imagine this butterfly going over the water all the way to Cuba? That's crazy. But another interesting thing is that to make this full cycle from north to south down in Florida and Mexico and then back to north, it takes four generations of butterflies. And what's really interesting is that the butterfly that starts out in the north makes the entire journey down to the south in one single generation. It has this biological process that uh, puts a stop to its reproduction and other non-essential physical processes in the body so that it can save energy and make that entire trip. And then on the way back, the butterflies going north, they're not having to try and beat cold weather as it comes. They're actually exposed to warm, nice springtime weather, and so they have a more leisurely trip where they do reproduce, and uh, the whole south to north trip will be completed by three generations of monarch butterflies. And so the monarch butterflies that make the trip to the south though are called the super generation and for good reason. And some of these tracking efforts like the ones we were participating in show that these butterflies, the super generation, can travel up to 4,830 miles. Wow. So if you'd like to know more about Smoky House Center, you can look at their website on smokyhouse.org. Or if you'd like to know more about butterflies, one of my favorite references is the pollinator migration page on the National Park Service website. So thank you for joining me again for Sarah's totally unserious video blog. And until tomorrow, remember, don't touch your face.